Welcome to Be The Wellness Podcast, where we help you master your body, mind, and the experience of life through insightful conversation, interviews with experts and thought leaders, all with a side of marital banter and some good old-fashioned humor. Yes, we are your hosts, Adam and Vanessa Lambert, and we're committed to helping you live life fully expressed physically, mentally, and experientially. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation. Hey, everybody. Adam and Vanessa here, coming at you. With another podcast. Boom. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Yes. 202. Actually coming in kind of chilly because it's it's raining outside. Yeah. But I mean, you know, it's springtime. It's Northern California springtime. I know. And I was just saying. May showers bring June flowers. No. April April showers showers bring May flowers. flowers. (laughs) I'm in the flower zone over here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no, it's okay. I actually, it's been fine because it's like a little, I don't know. It's like you get a little sunshine and then you get like a little decompression period for it before it'll be like full NorCal sunshine, yeah, full summertime. And then you're like, oh, damn. <laughs> Where yeah, were those? Where Can I get a little rain, Yeah, please? maybe a little cloud cover would be nice. <laughs> yeah. So we have a really awesome guest today, Dr. Karen Shanks. And we received her book in the mail. Um, and of course I fell in love with the cover. It's a, it's really honestly one of the best covers I've ever seen. It's all these beautiful butterflies and the book is called heal fatigue is not your destiny. And it's really about, um, a strategy and a roadmap to recover and reverse chronic illness. And I just really was taken by, I started leafing through the book and reading the chapters and just really, really resonated with the way she talks about the things that we all talk about, you know, yeah. the the health and the fitness and the mindfulness and all of the stuff, but the way that she says it and the way she embodies it and the way that she treats her patients mm-hmm. is just a really had a strong resonance for me. So I wanted to have her on the show and I'm so excited to have her here. Yeah, for sure. She, she really has it dialed in. Like, I mean, you know, everybody, I guess, has their own way of looking at things, but I think what it really comes down to is that her approach is so much in alignment with the way that we do things that yes. we're just like, yes, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yes. A doctor that's doing things the same way we are. This is amazing. Yeah. And it's yeah. almost like literally she has nine steps in the book, sort of nor- nine sections that she looks at, but it's like, it's crazy because we talk all of, all the time about our eight key habits. Right. Yeah. And so we're just missing one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe she split one up, but it's like, it's really, really almost section by section, the things that we talk about and the things that we emphasize and just, yeah, you know, giving that validity from obviously a, pract- a practitioner's perspective is always nice to see in the yeah, mainstream. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to talk a little bit about her background and then we'll get to it. So Karen Shanks is an MD. She is a teacher and an author of Heal, a nine stage roadmap to recover energy, reverse chronic illness and claim the potential of a vibrant new you. Karen believes that health and vitality are essential for the highest expression of our human potential and that the bones of our healing are are in what we do for ourselves. During over 28 years of medical practice, she has helped thousands of clients with chronic illness to heal and to regain their hope, their energy, and their life's potential. Listening passionately to their stories while fully engaged in her own life school of learning, Dr. Shanks has developed the nine domains of healing roadmap that synergizes what she has learned to be true, that healing is always possible, that it is within everyone's grasp, and that it ultimately comes from within. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good Bam. stuff. I like that about like that last part. Absolutely. It's all in you. It is it, the force is in you. The answer is you. <laughs> the yeah. answer is you. All the all the cliche <laughs> terms. Yeah. So we're really excited. And you know, um, Karen, we've been in touch with her since after the podcast, and she is working on how to work remotely with clients. So if you're interested, make sure to reach out with her because obviously with coronavirus and everything that's happening, she's trying to expand sort of the availability of her of herself and her skills and her resources to a broader o- audience without you having to go to her. So it's pretty yeah. cool stuff that she's she's ramping up for. Yeah. Yeah, which is yeah, it's perfect timing. It yeah. all and it all works out. Yeah. So, here we go. Here's Dr. Karen Shanks. And we're live. Welcome to the podcast, Karen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah. for being here. You know, uh the first thing that I was struck by when we got in contact was 
the beautiful cover on your book. And Mm. I just want to start with how lovely it is and how inviting it is. And obviously the book is called Heal. And we get, you know, so many books, um, you know, pre-release for folks who have books coming out and all kinds of stuff that comes through the mail. But this one just really resonated with me. And what I love about it is that it really invites you into this story of self-love and self-care right from the get-go. And, um, you know, really just translates this beautiful story about healing right from, you know, from literally from first glance. So first of all, good job on your cover. Thank you so (laughs) much. I I'm in love with my cover. I mean, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. (laughs) It's really just, yeah, it's just precious. So, you know, when you, one of the first things you talk about in your book, is you make this bold statement of how important it is to claim your healing. And that part of that is sharing your story. So Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a great place to kick off is by you talking about what that means, what you mean by claiming your healing. And also within the context of that, if you can share your story. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I think that's where healing has to start. It's, it's, it's about, what we identify within ourselves or within our lives that needs to change and only we can do that. Um, and it's about becoming our own expert and, um, sort of claiming our own internal power to set the, you know, set everything into motion that needs to happen, um, so that we can heal, um, and sort of pulling back our, um, Pulling, pulling ourselves back from giving ourselves away to what I, I often refer to as the quote experts. You know, the, mm. we live in an expert society where everybody's basically telling us what to do and how to do it. Um, and that's when, when we're talking about, uh, you know, a transformational personal body, mind, spirit journey, that really has to be, we have to be at the helm of that. Um, and we need to orchestrate that and we have to decide what we need. Right. So that's what I mean by claiming our stories. Like, where are we at? What are we unhappy Mm -hmm. with? Where do we want to be? What do we imagine? And then having the audacity to imagine exactly what we want. Mm, You know, I love that. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And so what, what was your story, Karen? I mean, you obviously embarked on this year of physician, so Mm -hmm. you clearly set out on a path to help people heal, but you have your own story of healing. And so I'd love to just give the readers a little bit of context about your own personal story. Sure. And, and there's, I have lots of stories, but (laughs) but (laughs) sort of the pivotal story that um, led to my path not only personally, but also as a physician into the, in the kind of medicine, this holistic, um, style of functional person oriented, oriented medicine that I practice. It was really when I crashed and burned in my mid thirties, um, just from a lifetime of perfectionism and stress and overwork and, you know, and, and going through uh, rigorous medical training and, and you know, not sleeping and being, you know, traumatized by all that, <laughs> Having, yeah. going through two, two, two uh, full-term pregnancies and then balancing children with work and trying to be at all. Mm. And it wasn't sustainable. And in, yeah. you know, and of course, later than, as I discovered functional medicine and I discovered, you know, modalities that, that helped me heal. I realized, you know, I had, you know, a whole host of functional problems. I was normal in the eyes of conventional medicine. There was nothing wrong with me, even though Mm. I was bone tired and I had migraine headaches and I had, you know, joint and muscle pain and, you know, was miserable. Um, right. But you, with through my own exploration, you know, I had nutritional deficiencies and food sensitivities, and you know, a, a, just a whole host of 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 what I call functional um, uh, problems that I was able to resolve just through lifestyle and and learning to live um, a healing life, which is a lifestyle that's appropriate for me: getting the right sleep, eating the right food. Um, working on some of my personal stories about myself and learning that, 
Um, I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to be at all for everybody. And I was just enough just as I was. You know, mm. there were a lot of elements that went into my personal um, healing journey. But that's, uh, yeah, that's in a, that's a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Well, no, I love it. You know, I teach a course called Authentic Self and Mm. it really is predicated on getting people to just recognize their stories. And I think Mm -hmm. it's such an important step because the stories we tell ourselves about who we are just reconfirms how we show up in the world and Mm -hmm. is, you know, as simple as it might feel to just say, well, you know, tell yourself a new story. It turns out that those, you know, those veins can run really deep and to really rewrite your story can be somewhat of a transformational process. (laughs) Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But necessary. So necessary. And Mm -hmm. I mean, and and I would even argue that, you know, most of us in life go through, you know, we have a coach and a friend who refers to this as the dark night of the soul, right? Where you just come to that point where you really just can't continue to go on the way that you've been going. And you really come to that point where the beautiful part is that you're ready for that awakening. You're actually you're, you're so surrendered to the fact that you can't keep it going the way it's been going, that it's really kind of a beautiful moment, but it doesn't make it any less, you know, painful (laughs) (laughs) to get to that spot. But just being able to frame it that way for somebody pulls them out of, uh, you know, living and being completely immersed in that pain and that feeling lost and stuck. Right. And, and it suddenly it has all has meaning. And Mm. that's a powerful and wonderful thing we can do for people, right? Mm. Mm. As when they are feeling so lost and stuck, as we just say, you know, point out that this is a, this is a pivotal point on a journey where your body and your heart and your spirit, that brokenness that you feel is really shedding light on where you need to go next, right? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, I really hope people just can hear that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have um, a really good friend that was going through a really tough time this last year. And I kept telling her, I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I'm so excited for you. I know. <laughs> because I know. It's, as difficult as this is, the awakening is coming. Like your, your life, your like your re-entry into your wholeness is here and available for you through this Absolutely. process. Absolutely. And I, I really hope that people can hover on that because I'm sure there's people out there right now, especially with COVID and everything that's going on, mm-hmm. where it just feels really hard and mm-hmm. really stuck. And mm-hmm. from that place, we can actually choose a new direction. Absolutely. And boy, are we, do we need a new direction, huh? <laughs> I mean, you right? think? is this yeah. a, a personal and collective wake up call or what? Uh, right? If it's not, I just don't Ooh. know what would be, you know what I mean? Like, right. I, I don't know, I'm like, geez, if we can't get it from this, like what's, what's it going to be? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you guys are going to get really busy as soon as we're out of social isolation. And I think I'm going to get a lot busier too, as I do yeah. think people are waking up. I'm seeing that I'm hearing it. And I, I'm hearing it and seeing it as I look at uh, what people are saying on social media. And as I mm-hmm. you know, check in with friends, this is people see that they're, you know, this isn't just a, t- a terrible, random tragedy. Mm. Yeah. You know, this, well, there's, think, there's reasons for, for what's happening and yeah, solutions. I, yeah. Well, there's, there's a hundred percent solutions, you know, and, and this is something that I'm actually pretty excited about. And I, you know, I was I was a little bit worried at first that that maybe we were going to miss the 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 message, but I feel like people are getting the message, and and you know, and a big piece of this just revolves around our own personal responsibility and our own personal ability to to affect how this kind of stuff affects us, and that's through our overall health and well being. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if you look at these mortality rates that are you know, just so closely tied to people who are generally unhealthy, whether it's obesity or some kind of metabolic disease or there's something like that going on. It's like such a wake up call. Like, look, you're, you could buffer this just fine. You know, I mean, our odds are your percentages of being fine go way, way up if you are healthy to begin with, you know? And I really think that, 
you know, and that's not news, right? But I think it's just finally like brought it home for some folks, you know, <laughs> they're like, this is there, you're not sure going to lipitor so. your way out of this, you know? I sure yeah. hope so. But you know that, and of course that means we've got to change our whole healthcare system yeah. because people believe their doctors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They right. believe that they yeah. believe the experts. And that's why one of my core primary messages is you have to become the expert on you and you have to question authority and you have to, you have to be the leader of your own healing uh, because mm -hmm. without that, right, we're going to stay attached to a system that's about, you know, uh, treating disease, cleaning up the mess of urgent catastrophic problems, right? Mm -hmm. And things aren't going to change, right? So people have to take personal responsibility. And I, sheesh, I, I hope this is a wake up call to physicians too, who are going to see and, and other healthcare uh, practitioners who are going to see that things need to be done in a different way. You know, because mm -hmm. if yeah. we didn't have, if we didn't have a, an urgent care based medical system, we, they, they wouldn't be as overwhelmed as they are today because they were already overwhelmed. Right. Right. Yeah already overwhelmed. So we had no, there was no um, resilience in the system to take on the, the, the newly sick, right? With, with mm -hmm. COVID-19. Yeah. You have a section in your book and it says um, it's the title is barking up the wrong tree. And it really resonated with me. And it's what you're referring to right now is that we're just, we're looking for solutions in the wrong way. Like we can't just keep having the same, you know, approach and expect a different result. Like it's, we get what this system looks like. This is what it looks like. This is the outcome. Now, do we want to choose to take that personal responsibility and, and take our lives back? You know what I mean? It's like, and, and, you know, to be fair, who like even a, a doctor? Yes, you're a quote unquote expert, but no one can be an expert on you like you right. are the expert on you 100 percent. Right. And so I right. love that it was one of the actually I was taking photos of the book this morning of some little sections and that one just resonated with me right out the gate. So I want to pop into the nine domains of healing because this sure. book is set up so beautifully because it really talks about the medical side and sort of, you know, the scientific side, but it really does it in this very spiritual and nurturing way. And even the titles of each, each section really kind of resonate with this being a holistic approach, you know, and mm -hmm. oftentimes when we speak with medical doctors, it tends towards even the language tends towards the more scientific data driven focused kind of zone, but you really integrate both which obviously is why you're in integrative medicine, functional medicine. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. clearly this makes sense. But let's talk about the nine domains of healing. And I know that we can't go super deep into each, but maybe you could just give us a broad overview with a couple of touch points on each of those. Sure, sure. So what I wanted to do is lay out the roadmap, so to speak. So I call it the bird's eye view of the terrain. Not everyone needs to work in every area because people tend to, you know, have areas that, that they have strength in. Um, and, but I think it's good to see that bigger picture and to see that roadmap. So then you can identify what your personal hot spots are and jump in where you need to do your work. Um, and so I tried to lay it out in a way that was intuitive for how we live. And, you know, and, th and this is just what I've put together after working with clients for, and working on myself, you know, for so many years. Um, and so I set up nine areas, um, and I, those are what I refer to as the nine domains of healing. And the first one I call let go, because I feel like we have to create the space for healing before we can um, direct our energy and effort and time to something new, because our lives are packed, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes that's the problem is our lives are <laughs> packed or we're, you know, we have so much distraction and there's so much clutter and we're, we're, you know, we don't have time. Um, and it also is about clearing out. So on the more physical level is clearing out those toxins and irritants that can block our physiology. You know, so if we're stuck, we're sick, we're tired, we're suffering from fatigue, we're suffering in some way. Often it's just, you know, we're, we either don't have the time and energy to 
uh, focus on ourselves and our self-care, or there is some block to our physiology, which I refer sort of globally as uh, to as toxins and irritants and negative energy. Mm-hmm. So that I put first, because it just seems to me that that's often where people need to start. Um, I love that. And I just, I'm not going to interrupt you on each one of yeah. these because I know you need to <laughs> that's get okay. through, but, but I feel like this is, you know, talk about a collective letting go. <laughs> like right, right now, if there yeah. has ever been a time, people, to embrace this concept, Oof. like here we go. You can make the space. You are being gifted the space to you let go. You are being go. gifted I- the space. I love that. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I hope people are seeing it that way. It might be really hard, though, when you've lost your job. You, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, this is really yes. hard for a lot of people. Um, yes, I feel very lucky. Course. I just do everything virtually now, you know, right. um, but this is a, this is a very, very hard time, but there is a sense that people are connecting more, that they are connecting more to the more meaningful aspects of their lives. So that's really good. Um, Absolutely. but then the next section and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm presenting these as if they're separate, but they're really not. You know, they're all, all of these domains overlap and are integrated. And so, but, you know, when you write something, you've got to, you've got to kind of organize it in some way or another. (laughs) Right. Right. So the next uh, domain that I present is the domain of love, about being, of having love and connection in our lives. And I really place a great deal of emphasis on self-love because that's really where it starts. So even the the um, act of prioritizing yourself for self care is an act of self love, and mm. that's where it all begins. And that you know, once we once we are whole, um, we then can you know reach out and take care of our families and take care of our communities and make the world a better place. Right. So self love. Um, and love and connection in general. And uh, we all know about the amazing health and spiritual benefits associated with love in general. So that's Mm. the second part. Um, And then balance, which is a combination of a discussion about, you know, finding that inner core of strength within, which I believe we all have. I think of it as being kind of in the midsection of the body and, um, I call it the the strong center and it's kind of where it's our solid inner place of strength and resilience or at, or at least, you know, where whatever degree of strength and resilience there is, it's that's what we're going to be building on. And I feel like that is also connected to biological energy and our ability to manage stress and I talk about how biological stress really, in terms of what's going on physiologically, is it, it's all about making energy so that we can rise to meet life's challenges, whether it's getting up out of bed in the morning, doing our chores, or the big challenges um, in life. So mm-hmm. that's what stress is all about. And we've got to learn to um, embr- see it as something positive and life affirming and the way that we grow and develop and become wise and and that we have the, the capacity to be strong. That's just part of who we are, part of our nature. Mm-hmm. So that's the section on balance. Beautiful. Um, and then restore is the next domain that's all about sleep. And I get into the physiology of sleep and um, offer some uh, tips about how to sleep well. And um, we also address um, learning how to rest, pause, and play. So, mm. and I love um, that. And this is an area that almost everybody that I work with needs to work on because people are usually try to hack sleep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they totally. also try to hack, uh, you know, rest and play because we're driven, you know, we want to get the work done. We want to create things. And then we forget to, we, we forget to uh, prioritize those things that are so um, restorative. Sleep, in fact, is an important way that we detoxify. And mm-hmm. w- while we're sleeping, our brains actually shrink and um, the cerebral spinal fluid sweeps the Washes debris it, right? out of the brain. Isn't that mm-hmm. amazing? I love that. It's amazing. I love that. Yeah. It, you know, I think we talk about sleep all the time and it's one of the things that 
a lot of our clients instantly say, well, what if I can only get six hours of sleep? And we're like, then, then get seven. Then get, yeah. <laughs> then, then get at least it. one more. <laughs> I know. Yes. And it's just a non-negotiable, you know, I think yes. that, like you said, people want to hack it, but this one is just one that's really tough to hack. You need it. Got to have it. I'm Gotta sure it. there are those folks who thrive on, you know, what we would consider to be not enough sleep. I mean, we're all different. There's great variation, sure. but I do, I think the vast majority of people need eight, nine, 10 hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially if you're running full tilt all the time, you know, yeah. if you're, if you, and you know, and then we, we end up with folks who are, you know, they're, they're kind of trying to do a lot of things at once often, right? They're like right. on a new strength and conditioning plan and trying to improve their athletic performance and trying to lose a little bit of body fat and eating a, <laughs> you know, a, a hypocaloric diet and right. yeah. people stressed out because they're high achievers and they're <laughs> like, but maybe I can get by with five hours. And you're like, no, <laughs> this is, you, you, know, you need nine. <laughs> yeah. You, you're like way up there on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the section on, I have a section on movement. So that's the next domain of healing. And that's a, not, that's a, it's about movement, balancing, and just carrying oneself well. And I, I present the, ch- I begin the chapter by pointing out that um, movement is really the whole reason we have a body at all. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, right. it's yeah. whatever, what a, you know, if we're going after <laughs> something we're curious about or we're, whatever it is, we, it requires movement and movement affects every single aspect of our physiology down to making energy and changing genetic expression. It's, it's vital and key. And I'm not necessarily talking about exercise, though many people do incorporate exercise into what they do. It make it's interesting. It's fun. It has its own benefits, but I think more important is just the daily, you know, uh, remaining mobile throughout the day and avoiding mm-hmm. prolonged sitting and prolonged p- postures that that can create a whole host of problems. So I dive into some of that in that chapter. Um, nourish, of course, is about food. Um, and I present a couple of food plans. Um, one is basically a lot of people would call it a paleo plan. It's, it is it mm-hmm. is a lot like, you know, what... Um, sort of the the common paleolithic um, plans that are out there. Um, And then I I, um, also offer a um, modified version of that for folks with inflammatory autoimmune problems, because I Mm. do work with a lot of clients and there are a lot of people who have inflammatory autoimmune issues. Um, So that's about food, about nourishment, about food as information, um, about all the body processes that are supported by nutrition um, and the microbiome, of course, which is uh, which is very much connected to that whole conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the domain of discover is about harnessing the power of the mind and getting back to our discussion about stories. It's about looking at what our life stories are. Um, and in, and those that are disempowering, working on them to, you know, morphing those into something, um, more supportive and ennobling, um, and helpful. And, um, I go through what I have identified through working with my clients as well as myself, what I consider to be the five most common stories that get in the way of healing that are roadblocks to healing. Um, which are what? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I got to go there because I mean, the, it's yeah. good for people just to hear this stuff because you can Absolutely. hear yourself resonate with it and it might click something for you to go, oh, you know what? That is a story I have. Well, I, the, uh, the story of our power, mm-hmm. our, do we, do we place it in the hands of the experts or do we own it? Mm-hmm. You know? Um, and there's a whole discuss. there's a whole discussion about that. Um, the second one is, um, uh, the story of our worthiness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we, Huge. are we worthy of our own attention? Are we worry worthy of anything? I think that is huge. Then the, uh, the story of our belonging, this comes up a lot as I work with my clients because oh, yeah. they're start, they're taking on lifestyle change and it, 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 they have to stand apart from their peers in very Mm -hmm. important ways, right? How they eat and how they're behaving. And it's just, it's, it can be profound 
or, you know, even within their families, there can be a lot of flack as they, as they start to, to make changes for themselves. So, um, I, I think it gets at that sort of primal need to belong. So the story of our belonging, Mm -hmm. um, and then the fourth one is the story of change, which is really uncertainty, fear about the uncertain future. Who will I become if I make these changes? What is going to happen? Um, and then the fifth one I have in the book is the story of time. I don't have enough time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you, story. You, you've obviously been doing this for a while because you absolutely <laughs> nailed those. <laughs> but I've added two more. I'm actually writing another book on the whole, just this, your healing story. And I've added two more that I think belong there too. Um, one is um, uh, the story of failure. And I talk about failure in the book and how failure is a story. And failure is really just, you know, when things don't work out or when we right. need a new direction. You know, it's right. it, it, and the failure part, it's an unfortunate term, but that's really the story we tell ourselves about our disappointment or the roadblock or whatever. I think that's an m- important story that goes into that list of, of uh, roadblocks. And then the story of faith. You know, what mm. do we believe in? What do we, what do we hope, you know, what do we hope and believe is possible? Mm. So I'm working, that. I'm developing those as well. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I mean, it's, it's so true, right? Like I think the story of faith for me has become even more, I want to say consequential. Like it really mm-hmm. has given a framework to all of this stuff. And I think sometimes that's what we need is a framework for things is what do we really believe about how this all works and our right. place in it all and how we think we're interacting with the environment around us and how we're creating our reality. I love, I love right. that piece. So important. And, and how high can we rise? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, are we being ridiculous? Because we're right. we, we have a different set of expectations than everyone else, right? For where- right. <laughs> right. That is a really interesting one, I think. You know, because it's it is just one of these things that I I wonder sometimes, just thinking about how you know. How, what, is, what is this experience all about? You know, and how does this stuff work? And you can look back, like in my family, and I can say, well, you know, there's you could you could probably plot some behavioral traits, let's just say like on my dad's line all the way back. And you could say, well, you know, his dad was this way and my dad was a little bit less that way. And then I'm a little bit less even more. Right. So like in some trajectory where by somebody's measure, we're improving on something, you know? Mm -hmm. And I do wonder sometimes if it's just, you're only going to get 20% better. You know what I mean? (laughs) In a lifetime or whatever it is, like whatever that one metric is, look at you, like you just, dude, you know, you're just never going to be, you know, 2000 <laughs> times better in a lifetime. Like that's what it takes just to kind of keep doing this. So I don't know. I mean, I never want to like dissuade people for shooting from the, for the stars, but then sometimes you're like, you know, don't feel bad about yourself if you haven't achieved some ridiculous goal. You know, it's like, maybe, right. you, maybe you, maybe you nailed it. Maybe you like lived <laughs> completely up to your genetic you potential. Moved the needle. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I know. And it's kind of a push me, pull you. Cause on the one hand, yes. I mean, we want to feel like we are doing the best we can and, and what we've achieved is enough. But on mm-hmm. the other hand, you read Deepak Chopra. <laughs> Right. It's like the infinite mind, infinite We're limitless. <laughs> We're limitless, yeah. exactly. And I want to be a metahuman, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> so but I, I like this. Yeah, yeah, this is the beautiful part about it all, though, right? Is creating your story in a way that makes it okay for you to be who you are, but also gives you permission to expand as far as yeah. you, your possibility wants to take yeah. you. <laughs> uh, well, well said. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, let me see. I think I have a couple more domains We're in flow. of healing here. Oh, flow. So this yeah. is all about feeling, you know, and we're bad at feeling as Americans, as maybe as people, you know, we mm. just, we put the, the skids on our, we, we hold, we, we hold back on the feelings that are not acceptable, that are not socially acceptable. The so-called negative feelings, which really aren't negative at all. Anger, you know, jealousy, suffering, anxiety. It's just all to, it's all the wisdom of the body. It all needs to be honored and it, and not judged. 
and so that we can learn from it, right? It's just bringing us this raw wisdom that's that's untamed, you know? Mm-hmm. We need that. So I have a whole chapter on that because that's a, a lot of people need to work in that department. I love that so much. And, you know, I think you say that we're bad at feelings in the book. And I, I that just like really knocked it out of the park for me because we have – really very little education unless you go Mm -hmm. seek it out on your own and try to understand what this whole feeling machine is doing. For the most part, you're just, again, taking on the stories from whoever was around you and helped you create a paradigm in which to experience those feelings through. Yes, And it's just like, like Adam was saying, you know, maybe you're only two generations from like someone who was, you know, in a wartime or in the depression or right. all of these things that just like don't add up to the current. It, it's not you are not updated in that experience. And so I love that there's a whole chapter dedicated to really looking at the wisdom of your emotions. Yeah, I, th- I think it's really important. And, and, if, and it's something... Uh, you know, that I find myself working on all the time. And we all have those, those paradigms that we've learned that really put the brakes on our, you know, letting certain feelings flow freely, you know, feeling grief or feeling anger and, and judging that, you know? Mm. Um, and I think that's a lot of people are feeling a lot of powerful uh, emotions right now, you know, mm-hmm. with COVID-19 and all the uncertainty, you know, um, we're scared. Mm. People are scared. And, sure. and we don't, people don't know what to do with that, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and the first thing someone says to you when you say, I'm scared, oh, don't be scared. Right. You know, it's like, it's the immediate right. reaction. Oh, don't, yes. don't be, don't be sad. Don't be scared. Right. It's like, yeah. but, but why? Right. <laughs> right. Like How we about- need our emotions fixed. Right. 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 How about, yeah, be really scared right now. Yes. Feel it. Yes. And Get, have, like, yeah. Let it be. And then yes. see how long you need to be there until right. there's a new emotion that wants right. to be present. Yeah. yeah. Let it flow I, and breathe into it. Breathe, let, you know, mm-hmm. so we can learn meditate meditation techniques so that we can just mm-hmm. be with our feelings and let them teach us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's so important. You know, I mean, there's, there's something that, I mean, I've used in the, strength and conditioning realm that I think just applies to basically everything. And it's like, it's a, it's a piece of stress inoculation. Actually, like, I think we mm-hmm. stole it from like some, um, special forces training stuff where they're mm-hmm. like, here's the deal. This is going to suck. And here's what to do <laughs> when it sucks. And you're like, Oh, okay. okay. Well, you, and you go into it and you're like, yeah, no, this is like something that is, it's not supposed to be good. You know what I mean? It's like it, right. being afraid is supposed to suck, but what right. you need to know what to do when it happens, as opposed to just pretending like it's not absolutely because like the yeah. worst thing you can do it uh, to be an effective person is to pretend that something's not happening, <laughs> right. you know, when, it, when it is. So it's <laughs> like, this is totally it. gonna suck. Yeah. This yeah. is totally gonna suck. And here's exactly what to do when it does, you know? And, and I, do, I yeah. That, yeah, we do that in yoga as well. You know, we yeah. get into these ridiculous poses, b- all bound up and, you know, and, and they suck, but yeah. you know, then the, then the yoga teacher will remind us to soften our face, soften our skin, yeah. breathe. Right. And then we take that off our mat into life. Yeah. So totally. Yeah. And it's, it's so true. The soften your face. It's like, okay, what, how do you make something physically challenging? Not suck. Smile. Yeah. Yeah. Just smile. <laughs> You know, and you're like, oh yeah, actually, it's, you're right. This doesn't suck anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's so true. I think yoga is such an awesome teacher and I love to practice Kundalini, which uh-huh. I will find myself in certain poses. I mean, and folks out there who have done Kundalini, you know, they, a lot of people refer to it as the weird yoga. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're breathing weird or you're saying these weird mantras and you're holding like one finger on top of your head and one <laughs> like patting your stomach and you're growling or whatever is and you find yourself at times being so pissed off like why the hell am I doing this this is so dumb yeah (laughs) and then you know the next thing you know is but that's where like you need to turn into those spaces you need to feel that frustration and allow it to be so that you know you can navigate your way through it and then on the other side of it you're like ah the release is so good (laughs) it's such great training for life and that's how I see strength and conditioning I see it. It's mm-hmm. a lot like yoga when it's, when I, when it's taught well, right. Mm-hmm. It's, tra- it's really training us for life. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, it's good yeah. for our health. It's fun. You get good big muscles. <laughs> yeah. You, get, you improve yeah. energy. I mean, there's all that biological stuff, but it's just great training right. for life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It, it helps you seek out the corners of your mind that mm-hmm. are, you know, that you shy away from, you know I mean? It's just, is really it. It's like when, when, when things start to get hard, how do you behave, you know, and mm-hmm. that, that will show up in spades, you know, <laughs> in, in the weight room, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. Absolutely. Um, then the very la- the ninth domain is rise and rise is really a domain that I feel weaves itself through all the other domains because it's really about being present. And when we're Mm. present, then we experience everything very deeply. And I think, um, I, my little subtitle to that to rise is you, we nourish meaning, purpose, um, grace and awe. Mm. So when we're present, not only are we able to, we're paying attention, right. And we can, learn to master what we need to do for ourselves. But it also allows us to just to take in all the, the wonder and the beauty of our lives. So presence, it's, it's really what makes self care successful. It's what makes us able to live a healing life. It's the foundation of it all. I think. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, I was um, reading this quote, by and you actually quote him in your book, but I never know how to say his name. Uh, Thich Nan Thich Nan Hot Han or Thich Nan Hot Thich Nan Hot. Yeah, I never know how to say it because like <laughs> that word is just not in my book. <laughs> Thich Nan Han, and he's I mean he's beautiful. I'm actually reading his Living Christ Living Buddha book right now, yeah. but in 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 that book he says if you love someone, the greatest gift you can give them is your presence, and it's just so true that that actual being present with someone is truly the gift, the greatest gift you can give yourself that you can give the world is to be fully in the moment. And I think that so many of these other things, like you said, just support that ability, that fluidity to, to actually be able to have a self that can Mm -hmm. make that choice to be present. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's just really, I love this whole flow. I love the the nine domains it just really resonated with me and i think it's such a beautiful way to talk about this mm-hmm. stuff thank you i'm curious mm-hmm. you know because you it's in a circle right so yeah. it's kind of like get in where you fit in mm-hmm. <laughs> and how do you exactly. help people navigate that because you know obviously there's so many systems out there right so it's like okay the first thing you need to do is this right. and of course i love that you're saying you know let go and make space but mm-hmm. i I'm curious if you offer people a way to say like, Hey, which one of these things resonates with you first or where, mm-hmm. what's the low hanging fruit or like, what's your advice for people trying to just get in and get started? Absolutely. And people usually know, they mm. know what they need to do. And, and usually they're not used to being asked, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're used to going into a medical or, or healing or well, whatever healthcare encounter. And they're just told what to do. Mm -hmm. So, but in the course of sitting with folks and having them tell their story and listening to them and creating that empathic connection, they start to feel safe to really bring their true authentic selves to what we're doing. And they know, they know where they need to start. And, you know, I might offer some observations that I, you know, things that I pick up from what they tell me in their story that, you know, maybe what about, what if we work in this area? Um, you know, but, um, usually people know exactly what, where they need to go. And I, I help them select and try not to do too many things at one time so they don't get overwhelmed Mm because behavior change is really hard. Even small Mm -hmm. things can be really, really hard. Um, so yeah, it's actually quite easy if you, if you're present to your client and you hear their story and you give them an opportunity to tell you they usually will. Mm. Right. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Because they are their own master, right? That's, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's well, right. And, and there's, yeah, there's kind of crazy buy-in to it. Like there's nothing like l- allowing somebody to have their own idea, right? You know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah. well, actually, actually, I know exactly what to do. Yeah. And see, this isn't rock. Uh, medicine isn't rocket science. 
but mm-hmm. it takes a whole different model. You have to put it, put the, the power and the, you know, the emphasis on the client and their mm-hmm. story and let them tell it in their own way and let them direct the process. And then I'm the guide. I have expertise in, in, in certain things. I'm their consultant. I can be their coach, their mentor, but they're really in charge of their uh, healing process. Hmm. Beautiful. I'm curious what, um, and because I, I don't really know how it goes with with doctors. I mean, do you like hang out with other doctors? <laughs> I, but, I'm, but I'm just curious because this is such like what you're you know what you're saying is it just makes so much sense to me. And just like I, I think anyone listening can say, oh yeah, this feels like how it should be, right? The, this client and doctor, you know, or patient doctor relationship. This is what it should be like. And so I'm just curious if there's like. Do you get pushback from other doctors who are like, no, that's not how it is? Or do, or are you of the mind that that everyone would like to do it like this, but the system is just not really set up to allow that? Yeah, I think that most docs are excellent. I mean, every yeah. profession has its, you know, less than awesome <laughs> right, right. people. And that's right. true with every, in every, every profession. So, sure. but I would say, I think most docs go into medicine for very noble reasons. They really want to help people and um, they really do want to hear what people have to say. They want to hear their stories. Um, but yeah, the system doesn't support that. It doesn't mm-hmm. support it. So I don't necessarily get pushback, but I do get, you know, people look at me funny, you know, when I tell them I spend three to four hours with a new client, like, oh, right. that's mm-hmm. weird. What on earth do you do <laughs> yeah, that yeah. time, you know? Where, yeah. <laughs> and Are you independently docs, wealthy? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some docs wouldn't even, wouldn't want that. They wouldn't find it interesting enough. They're more interested mm. in the fast paced high tech aspects of medicine. And we need mm-hmm. that. We need right. conventional medicine, right? We need it for what sure. it's good at. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Plug and I had a hundred yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. Yep. I had a ruptured appendix that definitely needed that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah oh yeah. Really. You wouldn't come to me for that. <laughs> there you was know. no patchouli <laughs> rubbing on that. That's good. <laughs> Your story doesn't matter in that, you know, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm curious because, you know, sort of to what Adam is saying is that, you know, this, the quote unquote system isn't being set up for it. But I think it's really important what you said, which is that some docs aren't interested in that system as well, right? Like they, they don't want it because obviously you you know, we're in quote unquote doctrinated into a system and somehow you've managed to change it. You've decided Mm -hmm. to reorganize it and restructure it in a way that's in alignment with your ideals and how you think people can really be healed. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you know, if you did it, it's possible, but there are probably a lot of doctors that are like, yeah, that's not, I don't want to do it that way. Like I would rather keep it in this other paradigm. So I I just think it's interesting to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then there's also a lot of docs who would like a different paradigm and they don't know how to make that happen. They feel mm. stuck. They feel like they ha- their only option is to work for a corporation, which they all healthcare systems are corporations now, mm-hmm. you right. know, most of them, and they're stuck. They have to do it that, that way, which is of you course not really- true. Yeah, you need to teach him about that whole story thing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Because well, that's yeah. just a story. <laughs> but no, I get it. I mean, you're right. So so many doctors. And I feel like this is really the conundrum that we're in as a society is that on one hand, in order to get really good care, you really have to just be almost out of pocket. You have to be willing to spend money that is above and beyond your insurance. Mm-hmm. Yet we're also required to have this insurance that in a lot of ways doesn't actually, you know, cover the type of care that many of us who are really interested in this holistic approach, it's not available to us. So it's, it's, we're in a conundrum for sure. Right. 
Yeah, because we we may need to enter that conventional healthcare system at some point if we have an urgent situation like you did, and like right. I had a I had a retina tear last spring, spontaneous. It has mm. apparently people who are very nearsighted can get these. I had no idea. Hmm. I just had a big uh, hemorrhage, uh, and, and yeah, so I had to have eye surgery, and and they did a beautiful job. It was just they took fantastic care of me. Um, I had lost no sight. Um, I'm so wow. grateful. Oh my God. Yeah. Sure. I'm so grateful. Sure. Um, but you know, and, and I have actually happened to get a retinologist who, who wanted to hear my story. Like I feel a personal connection with her and I, that is, mm. that's very cool. Even though she didn't have a lot of time, she made the effort to make, create an empathic connection with me. Yeah. So mm. that can happen in, in conventional medicine. Um, sure. And that's yeah. a that's a really good thing. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. especially if somebody's going to open up your eyeball. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's yeah. one of those ones. You know, you're like, hey, can we chat for a minute just <laughs> yeah. before I go under? Like, yeah. <laughs> you having know? a good day? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so true. So true. Awesome. This has been such a beautiful conversation. You know, I want to wrap with something that stood out to me in the book, and mm-hmm. I have found in my work. So in in our world. Adam and I really try to approach things from the strength and conditioning nutrition side, but also the spiritual meditation kind of Mm self-seeking side. And one of the big things that I am really big on my, on in my programs is this forgiveness piece. Mm. And I want to touch on it because, you know, the first thing people do when you talk about forgiveness, you even say the word, there's this instant shrinking of like, mm. oh, whoa, you're going to go to something that's really hard mm-hmm. that I don't want to go to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, oftentimes people don't realize that this stuff, these emotions, these traumas, they're mm-hmm. sitting in our cells. It's yes. really you know, it's creating the stories, it's creating, you know, illness, it's creating so much stuff. And so forgiveness is such an important piece in our healing journey. And I just love to hear you speak to that. Mm. Yeah. Forgiveness. I was thinking as you were, as you were talking, it is, it is so hard, especially for folks who have really been deeply traumatized. Um, I think, and for all, and for all of us, I think when we've been uh, abandoned or very hurt, but you know, I've come to realize that it's also really simple because it's not about changing the knowledge that what happened happened, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about changing the past. It's not about changing the person who hurt us. It's really just all about shifting our perspective that it wasn't personal, that Mm -hmm. it wasn't about us. It was about them. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and just letting ourselves let go and move on and let go of what we may have learned about ourselves as a result of that trauma or pain or, or, or hurt or whatever it was. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like if we, yeah, if we can wrap our minds and our hearts around the idea that all those things, bad things that happened to us weren't personal and Mm -hmm. that we can, we can change what we learned about ourselves from those events and move on. And we're, it's, it's really pretty remarkably easy Mm -hmm. uh, and freeing and so freeing. And as you, as you say, it just sits in our cells. It is such an obstacle to feeling free and happy and joyful, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that you said make it easy or that it can be easy. Uh, That's been a really big theme for me during this Mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. And I've been experimenting with the idea of just really allowing things to be easy. Mm -hmm. And I hope people really think about that because we do want to overcomplicate. We want to make it hard. We want to make it frustrating or difficult or whatever that is. And I think it's kind of indoctrinated into us that like we have to work hard for results. And so any Thing that you know is going to come to us that's good has to come with some kind of difficulty but yeah. like what about exploring that it doesn't like that it could right. be easy that it could be simple right. and well, i love the lo- hard I, part yeah. the hard part is that as soon as we let go and forgive then we ha- and sh- and change our story and accept that it wasn't personal and it wasn't about us then suddenly we have to take responsibility for ourselves mm. we can no longer be the victim right 
Yeah. That is that can be tough but that because now we've <laughs> got to rise up, right? We've got it's it's us now. We are taking yeah. responsibility for ourselves and that takes strength and energy and guts and risk it's risky, but that's 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 part of freedom. That's part of the road to freedom, I think. That's amazing. Amen. You know? I I yeah. mean that reminds me of uh, Alan Watts uh, there was a snippet from an Alan Watts, um, I don't know, lecture or something. And he goes on and on about, um, you know, the, the, the problem that he sees with having a guru, right. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, so, and, and he's trying to make the point that meditation, that you are the universe and that meditation gives you access to more of yourself and that you don't need someone else. And when someone else is in there now, all of a sudden, you know, my guru is better than your guru or my yoga <laughs> right. is faster than your yoga. And he goes into this whole thing. Right. He's like, and you can just let it all fall away and realize that you are this universe, you know, mm -hmm. and then he pauses for a dramatic beat and he says, and that is the birth of responsibility. And you're like, right. oh, right. man, you know, it's exactly right. Because it's, just, it's what you said. As soon as you release, you know, the, the external forces that have held you in this place that you are. That's right. That's right. It's now 100% up to you what happens with your life, you know? That's right. Yeah, that's scary. Don't you think that's what keeps people locked into victimhood and mm. not forgiving the past? I do. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 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 So beautiful. <laughs> Love this conversation so much, Karen. And just, I uh, mean, you... Did not let me down based on your book cover. I knew you'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you were. Got, you and too, you are. both of you. Yeah, thank you so much. So I want to go on a retreat with you guys. Please, we'd love to have you. I mean, when we get through this whole thing, we are going to be hot to trot to get back out there. So I bet. I bet. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah so great. we'd love to have you. Um, tell folks about where they can find the book. Also, you have a new book if you want to share anything about that. Just any way that people can get in touch and follow along on your journey. Absolutely. Well, just you can go straight to my website, KarenShanksMD.com. It's Karen, K-A-R-Y-N. Karen Shanks, MD.com. You'll find my book page there. You'll find, um, I'm constantly updating my articles and I have e free eBooks, um, available there. Um, and the book of, is available on Amazon and you can go straight to Amazon. If you'd like, um, just type in Karen Shanks heal. The book is called heal. Um, the new book is in, pr is, I'm just writing it. So I don't even okay. have a title for it yet, but um, yeah, I'm just working on that. So well, you're going to have a hard time beating the cover. So I'm curious oh. to see what you, <laughs> the challenge is all in your court at this point. <laughs> I know it'll come. I know it it'll will. Come. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, uh, quickly before we sign off, uh, uh -huh. do you take clients remotely? Do you work with clients um, in other States or how is that process? You know, it's, Yes, I do. I have clients come from all over. And mm -hmm. um, when under normal circumstances, I require people to come visit me the first time. And that way I can do a complete physical exam and we can sit with each other in the same room, which just is really, really important, I think. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, within the in our COVID universe, everything, <laughs> I'm doing everything virtually. And you know what, we can, we get a lot of work done. So yeah, and it's pretty I, amazing. Yeah. You can really get the energy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like if you think about it, especially if you are someone that is into meditation or into like moving yes. energy in that way. Yes. If you put your intention into connecting via Absolutely. the interweb, it's pretty incredible. I agree with you. I agree with you. So I'm probably going to be more, you know, lighten up a little bit on that requirement to have people come see me. I, I do like to sit with people and I do often need to do a physical exam depending on what's going on with them, but not always. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get more creative, I think, about that. Going <laughs> awesome. Forward. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being with us. We hope that the rest of your quote unquote quarantine is gentle and easy. <laughs> thank you. And same to you. It's great talking to both of you. It's great. Awesome. awesome. Thanks so much. And that's a wrap, folks. I hope you guys got something out of that and enjoyed that insightful conversation. Yes. If I do say it so myself. Insightful. <laughs> F-U-L-L. <laughs> Full of insights. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
And if you guys like that conversation or any of the other ones that we've had on here, then what would be super awesome is if you were to leave us a review. And yes. specifically, a five-star review with some words. With some words. It would be amazing. <laughs> it means the world to us, and it really makes a big difference when it comes to you know, getting high quality guests like Dr. Shanks on the podcast. When we have, you know, they can look it up and they're like, who are these guys? Be the what? No, let's see. <laughs> Be the and they're like, oh, look at that. They've got all of these reviews. Okay. Well, at least people listen to them. Right. You know, and it makes it, it makes it easier for us to go out and say, hey, we're awesome. And our people are awesome. So you should come talk to us. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, your review is like your fingerprint. It's like your words, your story, your, it's your unique way of expressing how this podcast has made an imprint for you. And it really makes a difference because when people see that stuff, they relate to you and what you say specifically. So, you know, if you're like, Oh, people already said it, it's awesome, whatever. Just the way that you Sorry about that. <laughs> the, the way that you New review coming it, through. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I was going to read one review that okay. um, just came through so that we <laughs> not literally just came through, but just popped up because I do like sharing with you some of the things that people are saying. And hopefully you can express something in your own special way. So this one is coming from Randa Horton. Randa is actually an, auth- an authentic selfie. So hi, Randa. Adam and Vanessa have done everything to make one of the most stellar podcasts out there. Information is always interesting. And the way they relate to things holds a lot of value to each topic. They have put in the work. So we all so all we have to do is sit back and enjoy really quality podcasting. Thank you, guys. I'm grateful for what you do. So thank Aww. you so much, Randa. We appreciate it. It means a lot to us. And And so if you haven't left a review, now's the time. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.